so much of your music is about love and relationships. You can say love and loss and relationships. You're single now, which I find very hard to believe. Oh, it's. I, but the I question believe is, it. Uh, you're not hanging out your heart, are you? Hanging out my heart? Oh yeah, I think you do. I mean, I think every artist hangs out their heart. You mean like a, a personal ad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At 77, Emmy Lou Harris, the silver-haired singer with a voice that's moved millions, is known for her soul-stirring songs of love, loss, and longing. Yet, despite her success, she remains unmarried in her later years, a choice that has intrigued fans. Dive into the story behind her decision to embrace single life and the personal journey woven into her music. Early life and first marriage. Emmy Lou Harris's journey started in Birmingham, Alabama back in 1947. Growing up in a military family, she moved frequently, a lifestyle that unknowingly prepared her for the nomadic life of a touring musician. As the daughter of a Marine Corps officer, young Emmy Lou quickly learned to adjust to new places and situations, a skill that would serve her well in the constantly shifting music industry. Her musical influences were diverse and included the folk revival sounds of Joan Baez and Bob Dylan, as well as the classic country twang of Buck Owens. At just 22, Emmy Lou married songwriter Tom Slocum, marking her first serious step into adulthood. Their marriage was short-lived but impactful, especially after welcoming their daughter Hallie in 1970. Motherhood brought new challenges, and Emmylou found herself stretched between raising a newborn and pursuing her budding music career. Late nights performing in clubs and long studio sessions often conflicted with her duties as a mom. This struggle created stress in her young marriage, and she and Slocum soon began to grow apart. By 1971, when Hallie was just a year old, the couple divorced. Emmy Lou made the tough decision to move back in with her parents, giving her the support system she needed to raise her daughter while continuing her journey in music. This time marked a new beginning, as she found a stable base to rebuild both her personal life and her career in the music industry. Rise to Fame and Second Marriage Emmy Lou Harris's life changed dramatically when she crossed paths with Graham Parsons in the early 1970s classic country. Their musical collaboration became transformative for Harris, shaping her skills and musical style in ways that would resonate for years to come. However, their partnership was cut short in 1973 when Parsons tragically passed away. His death was a crushing loss for Harris, but rather than letting it hold her back, she used it as a catalyst to keep his spirit alive through music. She poured her grief into her work, carrying forward what she'd learned from Parsons and charting her own path. By the mid-1970s, Harris was making waves in the music world. Her solo debut, Pieces of the Sky, 1975, was both a critical and commercial hit, drawing praise for her seamless mix of traditional country with modern elements. Albums like Elite Hotel and Luxury Liner followed, solidifying her as a major force in country music. Amidst her rising fame, she found love again with producer Brian Ahern, who had worked with her on her early albums. The two married in 1977, and their relationship seemed like a perfect blend of personal and professional connection. The following year, Harris and Ahern welcomed their daughter Megan, joining Harris's first child Hallie from her previous marriage. However, the demands of constant touring, recording, and public life took a toll on her marriage. Juggling the roles of mother, wife, and music icon proved challenging, and despite their efforts to make it work, the strain eventually wore down their relationship. In 1984, after seven years, Harris and Ahern divorced. But as always, Harris channeled her life's experiences into her music, continuing to evolve artistically while navigating personal challenges. Her resilience and artistry only deepened, marking her as one of country music's most enduring figures. 
third marriage and career evolution. For me, it's always been kind of a song at a time, a project okay. at a time. And I've been fortunate enough to just work with great people, you know, mm -hmm. who are inspiring. And so there was always kind of something in the wings to do. Uh, sometimes you whine and say, I'm too busy. But the alternative is, you know, uh, what you want is, uh, is to be working if you love your work. And mm -hmm. I, st I still love my work. I, I, I'm very fortunate. I'm feeling like knocking on wood right um, now. That's always a good thing. In 1985, Emmylou Harris married British songwriter Paul Kennerly, marking her third marriage. Their relationship seemed promising, grounded in a shared passion for music and creativity. Known for his concept albums and strong songwriting skills, Kennerly brought a fresh energy to Harris's career. Their partnership sparked a new era in her life and even influenced her musical direction. During the late 80s, Harris began moving away from traditional country, exploring a more diverse sound that blended genres. Her collaborations with Kennerly during this period resulted in albums that challenged conventional expectations. One standout from this era was The Ballad of Sally Rose, released in 1985. This semi-autobiographical concept album showed Harris's growth as a songwriter and her readiness to take creative risks. Yet, balancing a busy music career with the demands of marriage wasn't easy. Harris often found herself juggling recording, touring, and public appearances while trying to nurture her relationship with Kennerly. The music industry's relentless schedule left little time for the quiet moments that might have strengthened their marriage. Despite their shared love of music, the constant demands of their careers began to create distance between them. By 1993, after eight years together, Harris and Kennerly decided to go their separate ways. Following the split, Harris poured herself into her music, entering a period of impressive artistic growth. Through the 90s and early 2000s, she embraced a fresh sound in the alternative country and Americana scenes, collaborating with a range of artists and taking creative risks that paid off. Albums like Wrecking Ball, 1995, and Red Dirt Girl, 2000, earned critical acclaim and multiple Grammy Awards, proving her ability to reinvent herself. Life after divorce. I think my life is full enough. I've got enough cats and dogs and friends and a, a busy, busy work schedule. I'm, I'm actually doing okay. In the years that followed, Harris found herself at a turning point. Her marriages had left her with a mix of emotions and reflections, and while her passion for music never faded, it took on new meaning in her life. Music became her outlet, a way to channel her experiences and grow personally. This commitment to authenticity and artistic integrity defined her later work resonating deeply with fans who admired her emotional honesty. The challenges of finding lasting love under the public eye were no stranger to Harris. Her past relationships faced intense scrutiny, making her realize the unique obstacles that come with balancing personal connection and a high-profile career in the entertainment industry. Eventually, she made the difficult decision to remain single, understanding that happiness for her didn't necessarily lie in traditional romance. Instead, as she entered her 70s, Harris embraced singlehood with confidence, finding fulfillment in her music, charity work, and personal development. For her, this stage of life became one of liberation, peace, and self-assurance. Now we'd love to hear from you. Have you ever had to choose between pursuing your passion and maintaining a relationship? Let us know in the comments below.